Give us a round of applause and a shout of hallelujah. As we take our seat in heavenly places. Say your, to your neighbor on your left and right, you are welcome to Living God Covenant Church. You'll be glad that you're in this service because God is said to decorate you afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Be enlightened with the light of the living. Wonderful. Did you listen to those testifiers? <laughs> Especially the one that went to look for her son. No one prayed to have a lost child. My daughter wrote a book, The Lost Child. If you read that book, you see how children can easily get lost so easily. And that is why people that know, they are always very careful to watch over their children. But we know that God, the Holy Spirit, is the guide. He's the one that will guide us in the mighty name of Jesus. He watch over us and watch over our children always in the mighty name of Jesus. Now tonight we want to look at a continuation from where we left us. But another dimension of Holy Spirit. The last time we met, we looked at the distinction between the Holy Spirit the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and as well as the power. Isn't it? We looked at the difference between two of them. And we saw that one is the aftermath of the other one. But tonight, we want to look at covenant day of the Holy Ghost power. Say to your neighbor, covenant day of the Holy Ghost power. That is what we are looking tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And today's sermon, for those following our series, is Psalm 885. Psalm 885. The topic is understanding Holy Spirit with enlightenment for his mighty power. We are looking at part 6. It is simply subtitled Covenant Day of the Holy Ghost Now, this Holy Ghost power we hear of, every Christian, once you are a Christian and you are a church boy or a church girl or a church man or a church woman, you must be, you must have had Holy Ghost power. And one popular scripture that comes to mind is Act 1 verse 8. Jesus said, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive what? Power. He told his disciples, that they should tarry in Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. That they should wait for the promise of the Father. So the Father had promised every Christian to receive Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power is what you cannot do without. It is Holy Ghost power that turns an ordinary man to a supernatural person. Christianity will be a burden without Holy Ghost power. Without Holy Ghost power, Christianity will be very difficult. You'll just be like every other person, no power. You'll just be there. If you die, you'll go to heaven. Even without the, you manifesting the Holy Ghost power. But what a shame that you came into this world and you did not manifest the power of the Holy Ghost. The word of God let us know. He said the creature, the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. That's what is waiting for us. Every one of us, our manifestation. Romans 8 verse 19. The creature. So the world is waiting for your manifestation. For you to manifest that great power. That Holy Ghost power. Now this power we are talking of. The story about the outpouring of the Spirit of God started in the Old Testament. Even in the time of Moses. It is Moses that discovered that there is that what makes one person different from the other person is the Spirit. The Spirit that is in that person. Moses had the Spirit of God inside him. And he was different from every other person. 
Once you have the spirit of God inside you, you become a special person. And when the work was much for Moses, Moses now said, ah, if you can put the same spirit you have put in every person I put. So God asked him to select 70 elders. 70 people so that he can put that same spirit upon them. So that they can be wise. Because once the spirit enters you, you become wise. The spirit of God is a quickening spirit. It makes you to come alive. It makes you to, to, to begin to live life the way you are supposed to be living. If your life was half life before, you now have, you start living full. You now I've said that everyone there's a candlelight. If your candlelight was small, Amurupa, Adobe people they say Amurupa, small light. Now it becomes a, a real light. Even in the natural, now we look at there are different kinds of light, isn't it? We have uh, candlelight, we have fluorescent light, we have flood light. There are lights. If you throw a pin on the floor, you will not see it. The light is too dim. You cannot see. But there are lights. When you throw a pin, if they bring that light, everywhere will be bright. As if it's day. A flood light. Very bright light. Not like the small one with your phone. Your phone can't even see certain small things. So we have different category of light. And I've said... Advanced light equals what? Advanced power. The more the light, the more the power. We are told in Psalm 119, verse 130. It said, the entrance of your word giveth what? Light. Because the word of God is light. Psalm 119, verse 105. He said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It's the word of God that lights us, that shows us which way to go. Job 33, 30. He said, his soul was going down the pit. To withdraw his soul from going down the pit. To be enlightened with the light of what? The living. To be enlightened with the light of the living. When the light of God hits you, you become a transformed human being. You become a transformed human being. Now, Moses begged God to get other people and God decided to give his spirit. He took of that of Moses. He sent spirit from Moses and gave. Somebody was not, two persons were not there. Two persons they selected. They were not in the meeting. They were somewhere. But the spirit located them where they were. And that is why the Holy Spirit <laughs> distance is not a barrier. Are you getting it? Anywhere it can go to anywhere. You can send the Holy Spirit now to go to America, to go to uh, Canada, to go to Jamaica. Anywhere. It's the same effect. Somebody can be sick in America and you are praying with, for the person here. And the person will be healed right there. As a result of your prayer here. So distance is not a barrier. With the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very powerful. It's very powerful. So now, in the Old Testament, it was manifested. And one thing that happened, once you receive the spirit, <laughs> you begin to prophesy. And suddenly, they saw those two men that were not in the gathering, they begin to prophesy where they were. This one, uh, 68, were prophesying. And that's two, when we say prophesying, when the spirit of God takes you, <laughs> it's like drunkenness. You begin to do, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> You begin to say things. The spirit will be giving you utterance to say things. And you can move to where you don't want to go. You can begin to say things you don't want to say. You understand? The spirit will be telling you what to say. You know a drunk man? You've seen a drunk man? Huh? You went up a drunk person. That is how the spirit, he guides you. You saw I took Jesus Christ after baptism. Everybody came from home to come and do the baptism. Jesus Christ finished. They said the spirit drove him into the wilderness. You think it was wilderness he planned to go to? He didn't want to go to wilderness, but the spirit said, move now. The spirit can carry you. If you look at the Bible, you see people that travel with the spirit. Huh? Philip. <laughs> they just carry you. The spirit will take you. How did Jesus Christ travel to heaven? Was it not spirit? You saw him. They were looking at him. The spirit took him. Straight. 
So the spirit is very powerful. Now, those two begin to prophesy and they begin to, ah! They say, who is this one? Are they prophets? Who are they? Because it's only prophets that are allowed to prophesy and all of that. Ah! So they catch them. And they took them to Moses. Say, look, we saw these two. They were prophesying. They were blaspheming. They were doing, ah! Moses said, no, 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 no. <laughs> we know what is going on. We know what is happening with them. <laughs> Their name was in the list. <laughs> so just putting your name in the list. The spirit will locate you. <laughs> putting your name in the list. The spirit will locate you. And that is how it is. How do you think somebody will be given a name. And the name will start affecting the person. Simon. The father gave him Simon. Huh? That was his name. And the meaning of Simon is a reed. A reed. Something that is shaky. That is what Simon means. And when Jesus Christ saw him, he said, I change your name now. You no longer become Simon. You become Peter, the stone. Upon this rock, I will build my church. This Peter that they now gave a new name, you saw the time it took for him to be fully converted. This is the same Peter that denied Jesus Christ. Three times. So there is a process of transformation. There is a process, movement from one place to the other. Now, in the Old Testament, after the era of Moses, other prophets started coming and when the spirit would take them, they begin to prophesy what will happen. Prophet Jeremiah, Prophet Isaiah, all of them did prophesy of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior, the one that will come and redeem the world. Then it came to the time of Joel. And Joel oh, was so profound. In Joel 2, 28, Joel prophesied. He said, in the last days, the Lord will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Upon all flesh. He said, your sons and daughters, they shall do what? Prophesy. He said, your youth, they shall see visions. Your elderly, they shall dream dreams. He said, your maid servant, even your servant and all of that, they shall all prophesy. He said, God will do great wonder, make great misery unto the last day, the judgment day and all of that. So many things will happen before the end of the war. All these prophecies that were said then, the coming of Jesus Christ bettered the whole thing. Jesus is the beginning of the new covenant. For you to be qualified for that outpouring of the spirit, it's not every person that received that spirit. Though he said in the last day, the Lord will pour the spirit upon our flesh, but it's not every person. Tell your neighbor it's not every person. You must be in the covenant lineage. Tell your neighbor. You must be in the covenant lineage. There is a lineage you must be inside. If you are not in that covenant lineage, you cannot be part of it. And that was the, uh, God made a covenant with David. Because of the love God has for uh, David. God swore to David. He said, I will not lie to you. I will. He swore to David. I said, look, I cannot hide this thing for David. I cannot. Just as he said, Abraham was his friend. He could not hide what he wants to do for Abraham. When God has a friend, friends, what do you do? You reveal secret. And he swore. In Psalm 132, you will see there. He said, look, my covenant will not leave your lineage. It must be forever. Because I desired it, I liked it to be with you forever. It is through your lineage the Savior will come. So you must be. He said, even when if they did not even keep my covenant, eh, I will destroy them. But I will not destroy them. Finish, because God loves His covenant. He said, because of you, I will not. God loved David. He, he testified about David. He said, I found David, my son, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. David was a lover of God. 
Can you write Psalms you don't love God? Have you seen Psalm? Go and read Psalms from beginning to the end. Can you write that kind of Psalm? Even Psalm 190, the longest Psalm. Can you write that thing? Say you are not a madman for, for God. David was a crazy man for God. He said the word of God is sweeter than honey. <laughs> Ah, he said, look, I pant for your word. He said, like the deer pant to the brook to drink water. That is how I pant. I taste after your word. I pursue your word. He said, just to come and behold your face, to look at you. When God look at all, and that is why when David is playing harp, God cannot help you to come. If he's singing, playing, God must come. God inhabit the praise of his people. You cannot see the miracle that was occurring. When a, an evil spirit from God has entered, so. And when David is playing, that evil spirit must depart for a good spirit to come. Because once David is playing that harp singing, God must come. And that is one quick way to bring God. If you are somebody, he said in the presence of God, there's what? Fullness of joy. 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 Now tonight we are looking at Covenant day of Holy Ghost power. I'm just trying to give you the background of the covenant before we begin to look in depth. The background of the covenant. You need to know how the covenant came. And it is that covenant lineage that came to Jesus. Jesus is the new covenant. There was the old covenant and there is the new covenant. Jeremiah 31, 33 to 34 tell you of the new covenant with Jesus. And that is why the word of God made both to say in Romans 10 verse 4. He said Christ is the end of the law of righteousness for all those that believe. Once you are in the new covenant, you are no longer under the law. You are above the law. Tell your neighbor I'm above the law. Every one of us, we are above the law. You see it? In Nigeria, who is above the law? The president. But I know my, my, my fellow law, uh, lawyers, they will not agree. We tell them that the president is above the law. They say, for where? He's not above the law. No body is above the law. No man is above the law. No man. Because the president, if he, do, if he does anything that is bad, they will wait for him. They will him. After four years, they will him. They will ambush him. <laughs> After four years, they will hijack him. You see, governors are going to prison and all of that. After four years, they will you. Can you will God after many years? <laughs> God is above the law. Are you getting it? He's the creator of the law. He's above the law. You see it? He's above the law. And that is why when you look at people struggling to try to keep the law without him. <laughs> you trying to keep the law without him. You cannot. You cannot. Neither. Each time when they talk of the law, he raised the bar of the law. He raised the bar. You know, anything he says is law. If you are trying to be close to the law, increase it. Increase it. <laughs> so that you will not be. <laughs> eh? He's, he, whatever he say is the law. It's the law. Eh? We pray God give us on Sunday the man eight and more Jesus. So Jesus is the beginning of the new covenant. And that is why if you see where we read in Act 4, very nice scripture there, Act 4, 14. Let somebody read it. Very sweet, isn't it? He said, there is no other name. Oh, Peter was, Peter was crazy there. Peter was crazy. Talking to the elders, the rulers. Hey! Peter was a, a crazy man. <laughs> Act 4, verse 14, a smart reader. Yes. Hmm. No, that is not what I want to see. Um, let me show you quickly. I want to go to where Act 4. 12, 12. Go to 12, please. Now listen. They said, neither is there salvation in any other there is no other name <clears throat> under heaven given under uh, uh, given among men whereby we must be saved. Hi, Yala. <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> Peter. Look at what Peter is saying. Do you know who Peter is talking to? Hi. 
the Holy Ghost power, when it comes upon you, <laughs> you begin to, you become fearless. You're not afraid again. Tonight is our covenant day of Holy Ghost power. When we talk of the Holy Ghost power, before we begin to look at what Peter did, I want you to have foundation. The Holy Ghost power is an aftermath of the presence of Holy Ghost inside you. What happened to you first of all is for you to receive the Holy Ghost. And after you have received the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, you call it Holy Ghost or you call it Holy Spirit. After you have received the Holy Spirit, what comes next is power. There are Christians today, they have the Holy Spirit inside them. But they are not manifesting power. They can speak in tongues. You see them speaking in tongues. But where is the power? No power yet. Now, the Holy Ghost, there are different levels of powers. Are you getting it? There are different levels of powers in the kingdom of God. Different levels of power. We have the low one, we have the medium one, we have the high one. Very powerful. The advanced power, the medium power, and the low power. So depending, some people you just see them, they, 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 are, they are so the power is so latent in them. The only thing they know, I'm a child of God, I'm a Christian. And you tell them to go and preach, to go and evangelize, they are ashamed. Some are even hiding their Bible. Make them know, say, I'm a Christian. Do that person have power? Somebody that is dodging. For people not to know that he's a Christian. Do the person have power? The person, even if you have power, is dodging. Once you are dodging, Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you. So that person is just, he has not started. He's still afraid. When the power of God come upon you, fear will die. Shame will go away. I've said to you, I said, look, before you carry this big Bible put for your head, like that's where they sell, Okba, you will not even know. <laughs> say, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> People say, what happened? <laughs> what happened to you? <laughs> Something has happened to you. <laughs> huh? You will not know. Something has happened to you. Shame will fly away. You become bold. You come like a lion. You are fearless. You don't have time for any person. Your life is in Christ. You live, you die in Christ. When you come to that point, then you know. So I'm talking, I'm discussing power. There are three levels of power in the kingdom. And it's very important. When we talk of power, there is real power. The kingdom of God is not by talk talk. It's not by mere words. Apostle Paul was talking in 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians 4 verse 20, let us smart read for us. <laughs> Some people are puffed up and all of that and they don't have power to show. The kingdom of God is not by mere talking, it's not by words, but it's by demonstration of power. You have to show power. If it is my lifetime method, Bishop David Eredipo, he said, look, it is power past power. It is only true power your enemy will submit to you. Without power, I can't submit to you. It's only true power. When they look at you, they say, ah, this one, no, 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 no. They will submit to you. They will surrender. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 20. Yes, Matthew. Go ahead. Yes. Now listen. They say, for the kingdom of God is not just in words. In some version, they say not by talk. Not a matter of talk. Uh -huh. Continue. But in power. Thank you very much. You see it. It's all about power. And that is the power we want to see now. The kingdom of God is about power. Demonstration of power. So now we have different levels of powers in the kingdom. I told you there's the low one, the small one. Everyone that gives his life to Christ, when you are born again at new birth, when you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit come upon you. Colossians 1, 30, say you are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Once the Holy Spirit is in you, the Holy Ghost is in you, there is small power in you. The power is small. Tell your neighbor, say small power. That power, they call it 
the well level. Tell your neighbor well level. The power is a well level power. You can call it well level Holy Ghost power. Very small power, just there. And that's why you see many Christians just nothing. They are not just showing anything. The truth is that they are, they, 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 are, they have uh, the spirit of God inside them. They are safe. If they die, they will go to heaven. But you don't see any difference in them physically. You don't see all of them. You tell them go out of evangelism, they are not shy. You just see them going quiet Christians. So just come to, to church to watch like spectator. They'll be looking at the pastor. Say, pastor, preach on. Preach on. <laughs> you can preach, preach. When they watch finish, they say, ah, he try. The other one preach pastor. This one, he they try. <laughs> say they try. What about you? <laughs> eh? Pastor, they try. What about you? Pastor, preach on. <laughs> so you see it. That person, his power is very low. Eh? It's the well. It's well power. Well level. That is where the person's power is in the mind. It's in the mind of Jesus. And this we can see in the scripture too. Let's look at the scripture. You see it. It's in the scripture. And that you can see in John. Go to John 4. It's much that we read for us. John 4. You see this uh, small power that the person is radiating. John 4, 14 is smart reader should read for us. The well-level Holy Ghost power. Be fast, let's move. Now listen, Jesus was saying, whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give unto shall never taste. But the water that I shall give him shall be in you. Listen, you underline that well. A well of water springing up into eternal life. Thank you very much. That is the one most Christians when they give their life to Christ. That is what they have. They have a well of water springing up into eternal life. They are born again. That is just there. You know like well, the well we have outside, if they dig a well. Now when you have a well, the, the quantity of water that can be in that well is limited to the size of the well. Isn't it? It's very limited to the size of the well. If it's a small well, small water. If it's a big well, big water. Abi? And now, weather condition can make that water, you know some well, they dry up. That well can dry up. That well can dry up. So that well of water is just there, just as if you know day. You go to some well, look at all the water, some, those water, they are just drying up. So that is a level. And the water content of that well is a determinant of the power level that you have. If you just have your that in that well water level, that is the power you can radiate. You see it? Now there is another power level. The one that you can radiate. And that is the river the river water level. Tell your neighbor the river water level. That is another bigger one. The river and that you can see in John 7 38 to 39. Let us read that for us. Let's see the river water level. Yes, to 39. Please listen. He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly again shall flow rivers, not well, you know the former was well, shall flow rivers of living water. But this he of the spirit. But this is, he's telling you of the spirit. This living water is he's telling you of the spirit. Uh -huh. With the hand that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now the whole story, what you are listening there now. That power that you are going to receive is the Holy Ghost baptism. There are Christians today, they have the Holy Spirit in them, but they have not received Holy Ghost baptism. And that is why the baptism of the Holy Ghost is very essential. It's different from being born again. Born again, the Spirit of God comes to you. Are you getting it? And the, the level, the water level there is a well water level. That is where you are. 
But when you go for Holy Ghost baptism, you understand? Like if you I go for foundation class, the foundation class will teach you after teaching you, you now do Holy Ghost baptism. You are not filled with the Holy Ghost. And if you have that Holy Ghost baptism, you now have a river of living water. Your capacity of power is increased. Your dimension of Holy Ghost power is increased. You begin to operate in that level in the mind of Jesus. And we have the last one. That one is called the rain level power. The rain level Holy Ghost power. Tell your neighbor the rain level Holy Ghost power. Hayala. That one is powerful. Let's read Zechariah 4. Zechariah 10 verse 1. The rain level Holy Ghost power. But first, let's move quickly. Zechariah 10 1. Zechariah 10, verse 1. Yes. Ask ye of the Lord. Rain in the time of the latter rain. So that the Lord can make bright clouds. And give them showers of rains. To everyone grass in the field. Thank you very much. Now, the rain level power of the Holy Ghost is the highest one. Hey. Even river, are you getting it? The river level power, eh? is it not the rain that determines the size of a river? It is the rain that determines the size of a river. There are some rivers today, you see that they don't dry. They are very small. They turn into small, small streams. When the rain is not, somewhere will just dry up during dry season. Some river, they may not dry up, but you see them struggling, struggling. If you see some small, small river, they will be struggling, struggling. You understand? But they will still be there, just managing. It's, <clears throat> it's dependent on the rain. There is the former rain and there is the latter rain. Who gives them? It is the Lord that gives them. That's why I say, I will give you the former rain. I will give you the latter rain. He's the one that makes all those rivers of water, all those wells of water, to whatever it is. So if you have the rain of the Spirit, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Holy Ghost reign of the Spirit. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. If you are at that level, <laughs> which means you have the highest form of power. The highest form of power. The reign. You begin to do exploits. You begin to do the, or the imaginable. Signs and wonder begin to happen. People begin to wonder. And that was the kind of thing that was exhibited in Act 4. You saw Act 4, the drama that was going on in Act 4. Ah, yeah, la. In Act 4, where we read something happened in Act 3 before he came to Act 4. In Act 3, you remember the story of uh, Peter and John at the beautiful gate. They were entering the beautiful gate. They saw a man that was lame from bed. They usually carry that man to come and put at the gate called beautiful. That gate must be really beautiful. The name, they call it the gate beautiful. And as they were entering, they saw the man and Peter focused his eyes on the man. And the man was looking at him. You want to give me something? <laughs> As if you want to give prayer. God, he's begging for arm. So Peter and John, they looked at him. And they said to him, Silver or gold we have none. But such that we have. What is it that they have? Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost power. Say Holy Ghost power. He says such that we have, we give to you. Get up and walk. They held the man. Get up. And the man stood up. Ah! This is a man that was lame from birth. He was giving birth. He was lame. This man, they say, is age 40. This man was already an advanced man. He has not worked all his life. 40 years, the man got up. People know that man. Everybody know him. The parents and the church, they know him. He comes there to beg. For 40 years. And it caused commotion everywhere. What happened? How? And the man started, the man followed them to enter church and begin to chupule, begin to jump like uh, David. You know that David dance? Hey, hey, thank God, thank God. <laughs> so, ah, people, they were mesmerized, confused. What is going on? Is he not this man? How? They know this man, everything. And Peter told them, say, look, why are you people confused? Don't be confused. 
You understand? You are doing this as if it is by our power we used to do this. Don't you know why we, how this thing? That is Jesus Christ and all of that. So, the elders, all those, the rulers, they were annoyed. If you look at Acts 4, and they went and arrested, because they caused commotion in the synagogue, they went and arrested uh, Peter and John. They arrested them and went and locked them up. So what? And in the morning, they brought them out. They now gathered. Caius, the chief, the high priest, all of them, all the people that matters in, the, in terms of uh, the chief priest and all, they all gathered and they brought him in their midst. And they asked him, they said, by what power and by what name did you use to make this man to get up? <laughs> he said, you want to know the power and the name? He says, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, which you people kill, which you people crucify, and he, he has resurrected, he don't come back. And by the Holy Ghost power, that is what make the person. They say, which one? Why are you preaching with that name? Have we not asked you not to preach in that? Never you to call that name. Never. They say, what is wrong with you? And Peter boss, Holy Ghost, the power that was in Peter. Peter was fearless. You see, when you are filled with Holy Ghost power, three things happen to you. Three things. Number one, you become fearless. You become fearless. <laughs> Your spirit become an indomitable spirit. <laughs> an indomitable spirit. That is what you are fearless. Number two, you become a, your, your, the spirit in you become an indomitable spirit. A spirit that you cannot defeat. Then number three, you become more than conqueror. Those are the three things that happened. And that was where Peter was. Peter body shaking. The Holy Spirit himself and John, they cannot hold themselves. And they were saying, look, let it be known to you. And they begin to preach. <laughs> This man, they looked at it. What is ah, they said? We understand that these people they are not learned people. It's not as if they go to school, Harvard, or anywhere. Not. These people are not learned people. He said, But a notable miracle, we cannot deny that a, a notable miracle has occurred because they know this man case. It's not as if what you manage, say the stage manage. Uh -uh, this man they know. They say we cannot deny that a notable miracle has occurred. So what? Peter is busy. They say, hold on, Peter. Come. Stop. We're going to go this side. Let us consult. They have to go and hold meeting. All these things. What are we going to do to this people? So they start talking. They say, look, if we touch them, People will react. But what they have done, they are not learned. But the way the exuberance, the way the, the dynamics in, the way they, they, they talk, the power that is a student in them. Ha! These people, they are followers of Jesus. They know that they say they, these people, they were the one following that Jesus. That Jesus will we kill. Now this one, they follow up. Eh? See, they are talking boldly and all of that. They say, okay, what do we do? Let's just frighten them, threaten them. That they should not speak that name Jesus. They should not talk about Jesus. They should not speak about Jesus. They should not preach anything about Jesus. We threaten them and let them go. So then I call Peter and say, come. Look, this is our decision. We are going to let you go. But never again speak about that name Jesus or that power you are talking of. Never to speak about it or to talk about it. Huh? Then you can go. Peter and John said, you judge for yourself. Who am I supposed to listen to? Is it you or God? Who should I listen to? <laughs> Peter and John, they are mad. <laughs> he said, you judge for yourself. Who am I supposed to listen to? So I should listen to this one you are talking. Or oh God. He said, we cannot listen to you. It is God we are going to listen to. <laughs> if we say, get out from here, foolish people. Get out, get out, get out, get out. 
<laughs> they could not do them anything. And they drove them out. And they left. And they went and meet their people and all of that. Instead of them stopping, for where can they stop? Peter, when Holy Ghost power has taken Now, they gather themselves. They now brought the case to God. They make the matter worse. When they gather, they now explain their story, how they arrested them, how they did it, how they released them. Then they now say, God, it is you that your son Jesus Christ has come. And now, they killed that your son. The son has gone back and he has asked us to do all this work. They have threatened us that we should not speak of Jesus again. We should not do this and all of that. They now prayed. Say, now God, give us more boldness. Give us more utterance. So that we'll be fearless. We'll be doing it. We will not stop. And they say, why they were praying? All of them there. They say, the ground shook. And the Holy Ghost came again. Fell all of them. That is the reign of the Spirit. They prayed and the ground shook. And God gave them power. They became fearless. And they said everyone was subject unto the apostles. Anything they talk. And God wants to prove the kind of power he has given them. Do you know what God did? <laughs> Every person, they started, they, in fact, 5,000 people joined them. And they started selling their things and bringing it. They were sharing together. They were all doing things together. And suddenly, a man went to sell his piece of land and brought to them and dropped it. People started selling things, bringing, they will share the thing and every person, they have common post, common everything. They were living together happily. Then Ananias and Sapphira, you know the story of Ananias and Sapphira? They went and sold their own property too. And the husband came because he saw all that's doing. The husband now brought it and brought it to Peter. He said, this is, I sold my land. Look at it. And Peter looked at him with the Holy Ghost eye. And say, Ananias, when you have not sold this thing, is it not your property? Is it not your own? It is you, you brought it freely. Why have you come now to come and lie against the Holy Spirit? Why? You come bring some, keep some. You are telling lie against the Holy Spirit. And as the man, they look, the, the Holy Spirit inside that man, the spirit left the man. He gave up the ghost and he fell and died. The young man, they said, carry this man, go and bury him. Everybody was looking. Nobody touched him. Psst, to tell you the power that Peter got, the Holy Ghost power. Just talking that you lie against the Holy Ghost. You've not lied against man. You've lied against the Holy Ghost. When they went to bury that man, they were coming, the wife just came in. He said, come, Sapphira. The wife's name is Sapphira. He said, come. Your husband said you people sold this thing at social amount. Is it true? He said, yes. What my husband said is true. We sold it at that amount. He said, so what made you to agree with your husband to lie against the Holy Spirit? He said, the people that carry your husband to go bury him, they don't come back. They go carry you too. Just saying it. The woman don't go. Are you not going to be afraid of that person? <laughs> they bundled the woman again. She, she gave up the ghost instantly. And you know, she was one of them before. She was filled with the Holy Spirit too. You understand? Each of them gave up the ghost. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They took them. They went and buried her. They said they buried her beside her husband for lying. Telling lie. You see, if you have Holy Ghost in you, you must run for lie. Tell your neighbor, run for lie. Because the Holy Spirit does not like lie. Imagine all those that are filled with the Spirit if, if you start telling lies and you are dying. Anybody that tell I die, anybody that tell I die. You will see there will be no lie in the church anymore. <laughs> eh? There will be no lie. Holy Spirit does not like lie. You speak the truth. Ephesians 4 verse 30. He said, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God that is sealed in you in the day of redemption. We are not to tell lies. You see the power of the Holy Ghost. 
Peter don't need to touch them. Signs and wonder. Peter at the time, his shadow was healing people. If he passed, they will put sick people. Once he passed, they'll be healed. Once he passed, if he touch you, you are healed. Touch you, you are healed. Too much power. Tell your neighbor too much power. And that power is available tonight in the mind, in the mind of Jesus. If you believe that, jump over your seat. Father Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We appreciate you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, King of Glory. You have given us all of the various levels of powers. The water level, the well level of power. The, uh, the river level of power. And the rain level of power. Father Lord, let manifest it in this church in the name of the Lord Jesus. That Holy Ghost power. Let us be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Let us do great wonder. Let us do exploit. So signs and wonder will follow us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father Lord, let the latter rain be greater than the former rain in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let signs and wonder begin to work, O oh Lord. And people will know that there is God in the name of the Lord Jesus. What time?